The Princess of Florence, not a new game, it came out in the year 2000, but now we have a new edition by WizKids with a very nice production value, as you will see. And I didn't play the original game, so good for me, I had the opportunity now to catch up with a game that I had missed originally. Also, this game combines bidding with tiling, so basically two of my favorite game mechanics, so very, I was very excited. And the game seemed very promising. I almost thought, like, how come I missed it? But hey, uh, there are many games. But again, never too late. Each player will have a display such as this one. It is double-sided, so you can choose the art that you prefer, although that has no effect on gameplay. And then you have several slots here where you will place, if you get them, different kind of upgrades, such as jesters on your stage, builders on your display, different kinds of tiles representing freedom, such as freedom to travel, freedom to, uh, to, to write, and freedom of religion. So that will be used for that, just to again organize some of your game components. And then you're gonna have here an area where you will be uh, placing landscape tiles, uh, such as these, and also building tiles that come from this other side of the board just like so for example and usually when you place a building not landscape but when you place a building you cannot place them orthogonally adjacent to each other like so meh, unless you have enough builders on your personal display to allow you to break that rule then it's okay for that check i suppose it's only in the game so we can touch them only diagonally like that so and here you have a player with various icons and things. Now, the board is divided into two areas that are used to store different kind of components. And the game lasts seven turns, and each turn is split into two phases. One is a bidding, is an auction, in which players will uh, bid money to acquire one of these seven items. And then, in turn order, players will take two actions, and, these, and this time, the two actions are based on this side of the board. They will allow the players to interact with these other components. So, first, uh, the bid. Uh, the first player in a turn will start the bid by indicating one of these items. So, we're going to bid for these cards, or these cards, or for builders, or for jesters, or for one of those. So I start by saying, okay, now we're going to bid uh, for jesters. And I start the bid always at 200 florins, also known as Renaissance dollars. Sometimes we call them that way. And then it goes around the table and players can uh, increase their bid or decide to pass. And so at the end, uh, somebody will get that. Suppose that I started a bid for jesters, uh, I'm playing as yellow, but blue gets it. And so blue places their token there and takes the jester, places it on their stage, on their display. The point is important for two reasons, because each player can only acquire one item per turn, so blue won't be able to participate to any other auctions. Also, each item can be acquired only once per turn, so now no one else can acquire the jester. And so, suppose now I decide to go uh, for lakes, uh, we have the auction and I do get a lake, and now I place my token there. And so maybe it will look like this at the end of a of this phase in a four, or the bidding phase in a four player game because again everybody can uh, be there only once. You can also choose not to bid on anything but that's not necessarily a good idea. Now we go to uh, once everybody so has their new things. <laughs> if you got a landscape tile, uh, you need to place on your board the justice and builders go on the display that I showed you earlier these cards uh, and usually when you draw cards uh, when you acquire a card you can choose five you draw five you choose one and you place the remaining ones at the bottom and these cards will give you things as you can see to score at the end of the game a lot of things in this game will fill a multiplayer solo but also a lot of these prestige cards as you can see are relative to what other people have collected so uh, i think that that's and really nice indirect interaction there. These recruitment cards, well during the game you will play profession cards and you'll play them in front of you forming a tableau. With the, the recruitment card you can take a card that somebody else played and plays a recruitment card 
as a replacement in their tableau and you get the card into your hand so you can play it as a profession later. So that's really for the auction <coughs> phase that takes place on the side of the board. And then as we said, players get two actions that they can uh, perform based on things that happen on this side of the board mainly. These two actions, you have a nice player aid, really useful, explains things very well, really good to, to teach the game. Um, and actually, a very important action, which will allow you to uh, collect money. And this is going to be your main source of income, is actually the action of completing a work. That is, you will play a card from your hand, face up in front of you, and suppose that I had previously played those cards there, you'll place it in front of you and then you'll check how much work it produces, that is the value. So for example, the philosopher really likes to chillax and do her thinking in the forest, so if you have a forest in your personal area, she produces three work. Uh, if you have the freedom of expression, freedom of writing, freedom of speech, that tile there. She likes that. So that's uh, three more work points. That kind of building, four more points, four other points. Each gesture on your stage, two points. And these cards, uh, that means how many cards are already in your tableau, including itself. And here's a blue, and that's what that means. Remember, we're talking about recruitment cards. That's why somebody takes my recruitment, my profession card, places a recruit. It doesn't change the amount of work produced because the recruit cards are worth one in my tableau, just like the blue ones are. And then we have special cards whose value, how much work they produce, uh, depends on what the text says. So it's variable, as you can see from some examples here. So I play a card and that will produce a certain amount of work, which then I can take into any combination of money and or uh, victory points, uh, called prestige points, at the cost of uh, one point per 200 florins. And so if I made a thousand from my work I just completed, I could take a thousand renaissance bucks, or I could take 800 and a victory point, 600 and two victory points, and so on and so forth. Again, this is going to be your main source of income, so super important. Other actions that I can do, I can build a building. The cost starts at 700, it goes down if you have builders in your personal display. And, well, you pay the cost and you add a building to your tableau. You can buy these cards here, which are the ones that I showed you, that will allow you to make money more efficiently, but it's a one-time thing. You can buy more profession cards. Uh, that, again, will allow you to complete works. And the art is, like, really, really cool. I just love the art in this game. You can buy these styles representing the freedoms, the, th the three freedoms that we talked about. So basically, really, you're trying to create a nice little tableau here by uh, laying tiles and collecting other kind of tiles to create an engine that will score you as much money as possible and as many victory points as possible when you complete the work. So you continue like this, turn after turn, first an auction, then two actions, and you're trying to improve your engine, collecting money and collecting victory points. At the end of the game, you check these other cards and may give you extra victory points and the player with the most points at the end of the game wins the game. Princess of Florence is a really good game. Uh, it also comes with a Soiter expansion, which I haven't played because I like the bidding element so much and uh, so I don't feel the need of, of playing a game uh, against an AI. I want to play a game against my friends and try to figure out uh, how far they can go, how much I can manipulate them into bid, into increasing the bid of something that maybe I'm not fully interested but I wanted to spend uh, more money than they can possibly afford. And I want to try to figure out when they're doing it to me, which they're doing, and I'm terrible at, at protecting and defending against. 
but it still works because I have a good time. So I love bidding games precisely because of the intense human factor that they bring to life and, and this is pretty cool because otherwise there are some elements in here that may feel like multiplayer solo but I find that between the uh, the bidding element between those objectives and the game objectives that have to do with majority in different categories and just the fact that I'm looking around and seeing what people have because I may try to recruit one of the cards on their tableau I found that there are a lot of interesting interactive elements. Uh, scarcity, some of those things like those religious freedoms, for example, freedom of the press, freedom of, of, freedom of travel, uh, those are limited. The number of tiles in each category available is number of players minus one. So scarcity is also another important element that uh, gives a multiplayer element there. So I really loved all these uh, all of these interactions, indirect interactions. Uh, I like, well, building my tableau and building my engine and trying to, to get a lot of stuff out of it. I love the dilemma uh, when you do complete a work of having to choose how much money you want and how many victory points you want, because of course there you're, you're walking a fine line, too much one or the other, you get poor in the second half of the game or you're very rich, but you're behind in terms of the three points. Uh, so very, very interesting decisions packed into the system, which is clearly a system for gamers. So maybe it's not a casual game, but if you have players that play games regularly, then it's definitely not uh, heavy, heavy. And it doesn't over overstay its welcome. So a lot of things that I like. Now, one thing is that you need to have a minimum amount of work that you can produce with your professional cards to be able to play them. And then that number increases from turn to turn, so making it harder. And that maybe is the one thing I have a little bit of a mixed feeling about it, because of course it keeps the game tense, because well, you can't just uh, play a subpar profession cards and get something out of it. You get a good amount or you don't get anything. Uh, but that also means that the economy is pretty tight. If you make some mistakes early on and you fall behind by, uh, well, I can't play any profession cards this round uh, or the next because I'm just behind by one or by two work points. So that can be a bit frustrating and that's just an element to take into account that the game, uh, the economy is tight the random element is minimal and so if you fall behind you can't count you know lady luck, lady luck to help you you just have less money to for the auctions and for other things and so you will be maybe unable to uh, do much in the later phases of the game i didn't see any obvious catch-up mechanics so that's uh, that's something i want to point out but again, it's not a game that lasts for hours and hours, so maybe by the time you realize that ah, I'm, I'm, I'm too behind, maybe it's already turned 5 out of 7. So I don't think that's a, uh, I don't, that, that's not a deal breaker in any way, but I thought I would mention that as an element that maybe is not for everybody. But I like this game. I like the design in general, I like the production, everything looks so nice, uh, and if it feels nice, thick cardboard. Uh, nice cards, everything really is very pleasant. So, I enjoyed Princess, The Princess of Florence. Uh, it took me a while to play a game that came out in the year 2000, but now I played it and I'm happy that I did because I like it.